Namaste and welcome to everyone to our continuous studies of Life Divine. Ms. Rangada, we are starting a new book today, book two, right? Give them the page and the chapter. The, the page number 309 and chapter, the knowledge and the ignorance, the spiritual evolution, right? No, the chapter is indeterminates cosmic determinations and the indeterminable. The book, Sri has divided the book into part one and part two, okay, rather book one and book two, and in book two there are two parts, okay, the knowledge and the ignorance, the spiritual evolution, and the first part is the infinite consciousness and the ignorance, and the second part is the Evolution. He talks about the evolution. So today we are going to do the chapter Indeterminates, Cosmic Determinations and the Indeterminable. <coughs> we'll read the quotations and then maybe we'll read the first paragraph and then we'll discuss the thing. We have to be clear about what Sri means by the indeterminates, the cosmic determinations and the indeterminable. Three terms he has used. Indeterminates, determinations and the indeterminable. So, we will discuss that. Maybe we could do that before we start reading the chapter. That would be good. When Sri speaks of the indeterminate, he is speaking of something which does not have features. The more features something has, more characteristics, weight, size, color, shape, form, it is more determinate. The less it has, it is more and more indeterminate. The idea is clear? That which has got features has got determinations. That which has got no features is an indeterminate. So, then the cosmic is making determinations. The forms in the physical world are the determinations of the form. So, from where do we start and where do we end is the question. So, do we start the divine? Can we say that we can describe the divine in any way? You can't describe the divine in any way because the moment you describe him, you are limiting him. So, he is the indeterminable. He can be experienced, but he is the indeterminable. Then, the formless, the infinite, the eternal, which is the divine, starts manifesting itself. And when it manifests itself, it starts making forms. And forms are determinates. As it keeps coming down, it becomes more and more formed and more and more clear forms. In the beginning, even the forms are fluid, like clouds. Then as it keeps coming down, the forms become more and more rigid until finally in the physical world, you have fixed forms. Relatively fixed, not absolutely fixed, but relatively fixed. Okay? So this is the what he is describing. Another way to describe these three terms, indeterminates and determinations and indeterminable, we are always starting from the indeterminable. Okay? But as it keeps manifesting itself, manifestation means making the form. And the form means you are limiting that which is unlimited. Okay? So that again we have said many times, but we repeat. If I am a potter, I have got a vast stock of clay and the clay has got forms which are potentially there in the clay. Pots and pans and whatnot, whatever you want. But they have not yet been manifested. So if you want a manifestation of the pots and pans in the clay, the potter has to take a small portion and give it a form. So, small portion from the infinite or the huge amount of clay, you are taking a small amount and you are giving it a form. So, form necessarily means limitation. Limitation means again, losing of its features. Okay? So, or rather, 
uh, losing its indeterminations, which is the opposite, okay, and becomes more and more formed. So you can describe a stone, you can describe uh, something which is very, very fixed in the physical world, but as you keep rising in consciousness, the forms become more and more subtle and more and more featureless until you rise to the extreme summit of the whole creation and that's indeterminable because you can't say anything about the divine which will limit him. If you say he is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent, only you are limiting him. He can be the opposite of omnipotent. He can be the opposite of um, omnipresent. He can be whatever he wants. Therefore, that's indeterminable. Okay? We can also think of the, the seed. The seed is contains all the determinations of the tree. If you blow the seed up, you will not see any leaves and fruits and flowers in it. You will not see. But potentially they are there, all there in the seed. So the seed is, the, in a sense, the indeterminable. But give it the right conditions, put it in the ground, give it water and sun, sunlight and all, it will start sprouting. And it will start making different tissues. First of all, it will come out and then the bark will come, then the fruits, the uh, leaves will come, then the branches will come out, then slowly the flowers will come and the fruits will come. So this is a slow, gradual process of from the indeterminable, more and more determinations are coming out. You can also think of the human cell. Every living creature starts from a, a cell. One cell which is maybe um, fertilized, then it divides itself into two, it divides it into four and all. At some point or other, this one cell which seems to be indeterminate and indeterminable, okay, starts producing tissues, different types of tissues. It produces skin tissue, it produces muscle tissue, it produces bone tissue, it produces light sensitive tissue, it goes on producing more and more until finally you have the whole human being with maybe 32,000 features. Okay? So, this is what Sri is going to describe in this chapter. It's about 25 pages and this is the basic idea. Next time I'll remember and give you a, I'll bring a chart and then we can discuss this question of the indeterminable becoming more and more determinate until finally you have determinates in the cosmos. Okay? So like this the word determine, no? so it's having this root as terminus, yes. which means end. Determine, yeah. So determine means when you can put a limit to something. That's right. The word term, yeah, term and the word term itself means feature, okay? It means feature. So, we start reading the quotations first. By the way, the Life Divine is the one book in Sri Ramdo where there are quotations before, quotations from the Shastras, from the Upanishads, from the Gita, from the, um, from the Vedas, he, from the uh, Hindu Shastras, okay, mostly. So, we read the, which are relevant to the subject. I am reading the quotations. The unseen, with whom there can be no pragmatic relations, unseizable, featureless, unthinkable, undesign undesignable by name, whose substance is the certitude of the one self, in whom world existence is stilled, who is all peace and bliss, that is the self. That is what must be known from the Mandukya Upanishad. The next one is from the Gita. One sees it as a mystery or one speak of, speaks of it or hears of it as a mystery, but none knows it. The next one also is from the Gita. In fact, the, the last one also is from the Gita. When men seek after the immutable the indeterminable, the unmanifest, the all-pervading, the unthinkable, the summit self, the immobile, the permanent, 
equal in mind to all intent on the good of all beings it is to me that they come gita so in other words what gita is saying is shri krishna is saying that when you go to the self the brahman consciousness you actually come to me the next is on the katha upanishad high beyond the intelligence is a great self beyond the great self is the unmanifest beyond the unmanifest is a conscious being there is nothing beyond the being that is the extreme ultimate that the supreme goal the katha upanishad rare is a great of soul to whom all is a divine being from the gita so these are the quotations and you can see all the first quotations are all how they are speaking of the immutable the indeterminable this is the you can be you can experience this even in the first level of the spiritual planes of consciousness the spiritual planes of consciousness are when your mind becomes silent or even if the mind is not silent you your consciousness your soul the essential soul escapes from the prison of body mind life mounts up and is free from the prison of body mind life then at that time you can be said to be in the brahman consciousness or the self the atman there are many words you can use for that brahman atman this is all the usual uh, the words used in the upanishads and the uh, the buddhists use the word nirvana okay because the world reali- the world reality is blown out it is sort of um, nirva is to blow out like you blow out a candle the reality of the physical world is blown out blown out extinguished this can be experienced even when you make your mind silent or go to the first level of the spiritual planes of consciousness a consciousness force everywhere inherent in existence acting even when concealed he is the creator of the worlds the occult secret of nature but in our material world and in our own being consciousness has a double aspect there is a force of knowledge there is a force of ignorance in the infinite consciousness of a self aware infinite existence knowledge must be everywhere implicit or operative in the very grain of its action but we see here at the beginning of things apparent as the base or the nature of the creative world energy an inconscience a total nescience this is the stock with which the all material universe commences consciousness and knowledge emerge at first in obscure infinitesimal movements at points in little quanta which associate themselves together there is a tardy and difficult evolution a slowly increasing organization and ameliorated mechanism of the workings of consciousness more and more gains are written on the blank slate of the nations but still these have the appearance of gathered acquisitions and constructions of a seeking ignorance which tries to know to understand to discover to change slowly and strugglingly into knowledge as life here establishes and maintains its operations with difficulty on a foundation and in an environment of general death first in infinitesimal points of life in quanta of life form and life energy in increasing aggregates that create more and more complex organisms an intricate life machinery consciousness est- consciousness also establishes and maintains a growing but precarious light in the darkness of an original nations and a universal ignorance quite a <laughs> para so we'll have to go into a little bit of details for what is saying 
basically what he's saying is that you are starting from an inconscience and the inconscience has got the full consciousness and force and sachidananda is involved in the inconscience and because it is the divine in uh, consciousness force it is slowly emerging very with great difficulty because the opposite is the principle of the divine it is the everything in the inconscient is the opposite of the divine the superconscient and the inconscient are opposites in many ways but they are also very similar in many ways the similarities are superconscious is infinite the inconscious is infinite the superconscious is formless the inconscient also is formless to begin with the superconscious is the seed from which everything is there in the seed and it comes out that's a involution same with the inconscious also it's a seed form from which everything comes out the only difference is the superconscious is a seed of light and the inconscient is a seed of darkness so from from the superconscious you have what you can call the involution the movement is the same it goes on bringing out whatever is latent in it and the from the inconscious what comes out is also all that is involved in it but you call it the evolution one is starting from light one is starting from darkness okay so they are mirror images of each other you can say that they are mirror images of each other when you look in a mirror left becomes right and right becomes left so this is exactly what's happening that is there the light becomes the dark the yin and yang symbol is the same no pardon the yin and yang symbol no that yin uh, and yang no ah, that symbol yes, is that, the same no yeah dark and white uh, no yeah. it each I has i think yin yang has something to do with i think purusha prakriti is it oh. but again the same because this is prakriti and that is purusha purusha is consciousness and prakriti is force so in a sense that also applies <laughs> okay so so we start reading the now the last quotation from the gita is a very interesting one because <laughs> rare is the great of soul to whom all is the divine being okay sarvam khalu idam brahman isn't that the thing vasudeva sarvam iti sa mahatma sudurlabha okay that is Va- in sanskrit right yeah. that is vasudeva in- sarvam iti samahatma sudurlabha now by definition of the gita itself sarvam so <laughs> is this uh, mahatma <laughs> so it is very very interesting that the gita itself is saying because okay. va- after 1956 this verse should be taken with a little more flexibility yes hasn't the possibilities of spiritual evolution increased so we should not probably say sudur lava i don't know ah okay sudur lava yeah okay samahatma sudur lava yeah you are right so in other words the superman is bound to come one day he is going to bound because after 1956 the conditions in the physical world have changed <clears throat> sri ramdev describes that also in fact what he says is this he says that potentiality is one thing but the Uh, I forgot the exact words. It's very interesting. We'll come to that. We'll discuss that. Okay. So, the seed has the potentiality of the tree, but the right conditions must be given to it. If the right conditions are not given, the seed can never become the tree. It can dry. It can die. No, the seed. If you don't pour Take water, seed, yeah, and put it on the table, yeah, it will never become a. Exactly. You have to give a right soil. Yeah, you have to give. So now that is what Sri Ramdev has done. okay he has made that possible he has put the seed of that into and given the right conditions now it is flowering if he had not done that the possibility would be infinitely remote <laughs> but that's exactly what he has done okay we read the paragraph a consciousness force consciousness force chit shakti corresponding to the sachidananda everywhere inherent in existence so existence sat okay substance it is there everywhere 
only at the higher level it is more open and as it keeps coming down in the lower levels it becomes more and more hidden okay everywhere inherent in existence acting even when concealed even when you don't see it the sachidananda is active is a creator of the worlds an occult secret of nature occult hidden secret of nature nature also is go on creating and the superconscious also is go on creating is going on creating but in our material world and in our own being now this is also typically sri arbindo he is constantly speaking at two levels the individual level and the cosmic level in our indian yoga mostly the attention was on the individual getting liberty liberation but shramda is very very concerned with the evolution in the physical world also one individual getting liberation and disappearing into the infinite is okay for that individual but what about the world so shramda is very concerned with the collectivity also so here that's what he is saying but in our material world which is the collectivity and in our own being consciousness has a double aspect okay and what is the double aspect mm-hmm. there is a force of knowledge there is a force of ignorance there is light and there darkness. is darkness both are there at every level at the highest level only knowledge seems to be there but darkness is potentiality there at the lower level darkness is there but the potentiality of light is there can you say that even in the undeveloped being these two forces are operating can you say that even in undeveloped being the knowledge of force uh, sorry the, the the force of knowledge and ignorance operating of course but if he lives in total if ignorance if it is not operating how can there be evolution okay that, in it? that sense yeah. okay it's like a possibility right yes. not active no okay but it becomes no it is active but it's a very slow process okay evolution is very slow why go to an individual who is not developed go to matter matter is the most <laughs> but he is seeing in our own conscious being you know you yes. already meant human beings here yeah, right both yeah there is light and there is darkness both exactly there is a force of knowledge and there is a force of ignorance the force of knowledge you can say in a sense is a psychic being or the divine presence in the individual but there is also the force of ignorance your body mind life is ignorant mm. <laughs> okay in the infinite consciousness at the highest level of a self aware infinite existence knowledge must be everywhere implicit or operative in the very grain of its action so let's see what he is saying he is saying in the infinite consciousness so he is obviously talking of the uh, higher level yes. in the super conscious of a self in the infinite consciousness of a self aware infinite existence self aware infinite existence infinite existence is substance subtle substance but that subtle substance is not substance it is conscious of itself mm-hmm. it is like matter which is conscious of itself but it is subtle when that subtlety loses its subtlety and becomes gross matter consciousness seems to be gone but it is there mm. it is hidden okay knowledge must be everywhere implicit or operative in the very grain of its action so either it is implicit or he is saying it is also operative in the very grain of its action it can remain implicit but it can also become active and because it becomes active it produces life first but matter continues to remain matter so so therefore question um sorry the previous sentence he speaks of the force of knowledge and the force of ignorance yes so i mean as i understand the light divine is kind of based on the isha upanishad yes and in the isha upanishad the words for knowledge and ignorance are vidya and avidya yes. and he says vidya means the consciousness of unity yes. whereas avidya means basically the consciousness of multiplicity yes so can we take that meaning for that sentence also actually i think so when you are in the ignorance you are seeing the many we can define ignorance in that way we can say that so long as you see the many without the unity you are in ignorance so basically when we say that every being has a double aspect of knowledge as well as ignorance 
Can we also say that it means that I have the sense of being the one and yet I have the sense of being a multiple individual. Depending at which level you are. If you are at the lowest, the first level of the um, physical world, okay, matter, life, mind, if you are there, the ignorance is much more. You are, you are saying that I am conscious that I have something in me. You are not conscious. In the spiritual planes of consciousness, second level, you are conscious. Okay, so there is the force of ignorance. The infinite consciousness of a self-aware infinite existence. Knowledge must be there everywhere, implicit or operative in the very grain of its action. Both the things are there. Mm -hmm. But we see here at the beginning of things, that means matter, okay, apparent as the base or the nature of the creative world energy, okay, an inconscience, a total nescience. At the beginning, we see a total nescience. This is a stock with which the material universe commences. Consciousness and knowledge emerge at first in obscure, infinitesimal movements, at points in little quanta, which associate themselves together. So he's talking of unicellular creatures. Yeah, yeah. So unicellular creatures come first in the form of life. Then they associate themselves, make molecules, and then living tissue comes into being. So that's what he's saying, associate themselves. This is the stock from which the material universe commences. Consciousness and knowledge emerge at first in obscure infinitesimal movements. At first, uh, sorry, at points in little quanta, which associate themselves together. So, the unicellular cells come together, associate themselves and create molecules. And molecules create living tissue. Okay. There is a tardy and difficult evolution. Tardy, very slow, and it's also difficult. Not only slow, but difficult. A slowly increasing organization and ameliorated mechanism of the workings of consciousness. So, what, is this? what does he mean by ameliorated uh, yeah, me exactly. mechanism? Yeah. <laughs> so, take first the unicellular unit, okay? One cell. Does it respond? Is there a sensitivity in it? And does it respond to the environment? Maybe only by touch. Okay, but it associates and makes itself into molecules and molecules give living tissue. This living tissue starts slowly making plants and animals. But even in the animals, there is a gradation of the consciousness. First you have creatures with one sense only. So, but that becomes ameliorated, it improves and becomes two senses. Then it becomes three senses. Then it becomes four senses and finally you have five senses. So, what he means is ameliorated mechanism of the workings of consciousness. The workings of consciousness are the senses. Mm -hmm. And some creatures have only one sense. Some creatures have two senses, three senses, four senses. We know, for instance, that the snakes can't hear. They don't have ears. But, and we also know that deep down in the darks, as darkest portion of the sea, the fish don't have eyes because they don't need eyes. Mm. There is only total darkness. So, I think the worm has got only tactile sense. No ears, no eyes, mm. nothing. Just tactile sense. So, this is what he means by ameliorated mechanism of the workings of consciousness. You can replace workings of consciousness by the senses. Okay, so. Do you know, there is a very fascinating studies about this, how the cell been created, first cell. So there was a first organism called mitochondria. So that mitochondria was living, it's like a virus type or something. Then there was a kind of a plasma type. So when they joined together million years ago, yeah. so that cell being created, yes. which is prototype of our cells, which yes. is inside this mitochondria, which is in a collaboration with the cell, but it's yes. a different organism yeah. inside. Every cell is like this. Yeah. There is inside mitochondria. That is a subject. Deep subject. They joined together. Yeah. Amazing, they made a contract. Yeah. That's a biology. Yes, but it's yes, very fascinating. In a very... In a very uh, how you said this, how they joined together as a group, different cells, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. 
inside of the cell. You're talking even about the inside of the cell. Mitochondria, she said. Ah, yeah, mitochondria. Yeah, I know. I heard that. Yeah. Before they were existing separate. So, uh, slowly increasing organization and ameliorated mechanism of the workings of consciousness. More and more gains are written on the blank slate of the nations. The blank slate of the nations, that doesn't seem to be consciousness at all. But from there, slowly, slowly, more and more consciousness is being registered. One sense, two senses, three senses, four senses, etc. But still, these have the appearance of a gathered acquisitions and constructions of a seeking ignorance. Although you have one sense and two senses, but there are three senses better, four senses better. Even when you have five senses, you are seeking knowledge. Science is doing that. Man is also doing that. He is seeking knowledge. You can't say that he has all the knowledge. So, there is ignorance still. Okay? So, he is seeking ignorance. The ignorance is beginning to seek. Right in the beginning, the ignorance is not even seeking. In matter, there is no seeking. But the moment the senses come up and the consciousness starts expressing itself, there is a seeking. Okay? So, a seeking ignorance is a very interesting description for science. <laughs> science is seeking ignorance. Okay? <laughs> even yoga, in a way, is seeking ignorance, which tries to know, to understand, to discover, to change slowly and strugglingly into knowledge. Okay? As life here establishes and maintains its operations with difficulty on a foundation and in an environment of general death, <laughs> first in infinitesimal points of life, in quanta, he is repeating, mm. in quanta of life form and life energy. Now, life form and life energy. What does he mean? Life form, matter. Quanta, life energy, is, vitality. Quanta is a very small portion, right? Yeah. Quanta. Quanta is a very small portion. Minimum possible, right? Yeah. Minimum possible. Yeah. Okay. Quantum is a, yeah, a sub, a, a amount. Amount. Yeah. Quantum. This is basically used to differentiate between what you call particle and wave. Basically for that. Yeah. When you can divide something and yeah. quantify it, the word quantity. Right. When you can determine, when you can uh, right. determine, right? Yes. It becomes quanta. Yes. From something which is undetermined, right? Yes. So That's that right. he used this. Yes. No? It comes from physics, no? This quanta. Yes. Mm -hmm. The quantum theory is right. Yeah. yeah. Why is light a, a series of particles or is it a wave? Is it that both? Yeah. That is the closest that physics has come to this concept of form and formless. Yes. That's what right. they are calling wave is basically the nirakara and what they are calling particle is basically the sakara. Yeah. It's a very interesting description how both are really the same thing. Okay, we'll discuss that one day, not today. Okay, so, <clears throat> so he says, mm, life form and life energy. So what does he mean by this? Life form is the material form, the body. And life energy is the energy that is in the body, the vitality. So matter and life. Body and vital. That's what he means. In increasing, I note that we very often don't make this differentiation. We have a body, but the body cannot be animated without the vitality in it. Just like a car will not be able to move without a motor. And the motor is giving you the energy to move. So the two are different. You have a life, you have a, a form, and you have energy. And when they come together, you have a living substance. In increasing aggregates, that create more and more complex organisms. Mm -hmm. The more and more complex organisms, you can relate it to ameliorated mechanism. Oh. Okay? And intricate life machinery, consciousness also establishes and maintains a growing but precarious, precarious light in the darkness of an original nations and a universal ignorance. But note the word precarious. intricate life machinery. Intricate. If you think of the human body, it's really absolutely a marvelous way the machine works. It's a, it's a really yeah. wonder. Just consider two things. You have a, a heart that is pumping non-stop 
for 70 80 90 years which thing. motor which motor <laughs> will last, last for 90 years no motor will last for 90 years okay think of the kidney how it is being able to purify the blood is by osmosis okay mm. so these are all fantastic things that happen you the more you think of all these things the more you realize that it's absolutely an unbelievable machine unbelievable a take immune system how intelligent it is take our brain how much it is thinking all that yes. time analyzing we don't even know exactly. what is happening moreover the knowledge gained is a phenomena not of the reality of things or of the foundations of existence wherever our consciousness meets what seems to be a foundation that foundation wears the appearance of a blank when it is not a void an original state which is featureless and a multitude of consequences which are not inherent in the origin and which nothing in it seems to justify or visibly to necessitate there is a mass of superstructure which has no clear native relation to the fundamental existence the first aspect of cosmic existence is an infinite which is to our perception an indeterminate if not indeterminable in this infinite the universe itself whether in its aspect of energy or its aspect of structure appears as an indeterminate determination an indeterminate determination a boundless finite paradoxical but necessary expressions which would seem to indicate that we are face to face with a supra rational mystery at the base of things in that universe arise now this is from those way of saying from where okay a arise a vast number and variety of general and particular determinates which do not appear to be warranted by anything perceptible in the nature of the infinite but seem to be imposed or it may be self imposed upon it we give to the energy which produces them the name of nature but the word conveys no meaning unless it is that the nature of things is what it is by virtue of a force which arranges them according to an inherent truth in them but the nature of that truth itself the reason why these determinates are what they are is nowhere visible it has been possible indeed for human science to detect this the process or many processes of material things but this knowledge does not throw any light on the major question we do not know even the rationality of the original cosmic processes for the results do not present themselves as their necessary but only their pragmatic and actual consequence in the end we do not know how these determinates came into or out of the original indeterminate or indeterminable on which they stand forth as on a blank and flat background in the riddle of their ordered occurrence <laughs> we'll see at the origin of things we are faced with an infinite containing a mass of unexplained finites an indivisible full of endless divisions an immutable teeming with mutations and differentiate a cosmic paradox is the beginning of all things a paradox without any key to its significance but god is a paradox <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is what he's saying that out of nothing seems to come out so many things so how is that possible okay so we can take take matter there doesn't seem to be any life in it and it's absolutely dead and it's the same everywhere out of that is coming what plants and there is no sign of life at all in matter and yet life is coming out from where is it coming out okay then 
and this life is it a one type no it's of infinite types plants only one type of plant no 100000 million types and they're going on new species also are going on being born endlessly so i think this para will take up next time i like how shrivind is writing here okay. boundless finite yes and then indeterminable determination that's right. <laughs> it's so beautiful no and the boundless finite is putting in double quotes because it's a very used in science also na i'm not sure yeah the boundless and, and, finite and then from where the question mark in the middle of the sentence is yeah. should have been the style you said it should have been just putting it like this because the matter mm. is producing matter itself seems to be absolutely zero but from there is coming out so from where is it coming out so in the middle of the sentence he his sentence yeah. he put this, this question yeah. no? but normally he has not put here yeah. a comma dash but normally he puts a comma dash and ends with a comma dash yeah that's normally what normally what we would do is put a comma or a, a parenthesis but this is his style his style that's what you said his style no yeah okay. this is his style of writing this boundless finite probably what would have happened was that when he was writing the arya which is when this would have been written for the first time at that time in some prominent i mean field of knowledge science or something this phrase would have been used yes. so he is basically acknowledging that current phrase yes. he does that in other books also i think so because even the universe okay it is finite looks to be finite but you can't you don't know where it is ending but the moment you think of an ending your mind becomes boggled because what is there beyond that ending so well, boundless finite <laughs> rankana this last line of this parasy a cosmic paradox is the beginning of all things yes. a paradox without any key to its significance but in savitri he replied no he said life is a paradox no he saying go- it appears for a key uh, what is it exactly of life of course no he he will explain yeah. he will explain what that key yeah, is yeah it is just intermediate right yeah. he is saying but here he is saying Yeah, they, that's right. It's an argument. He's saying that we don't seem to see anything. Of course, he will explain to you why it is coming out. It's coming out because the Satchidananda is involved here. It seems to be a zero, but it's not a zero. You see, there is a big difference between that discussion. Will come in the uh, the next chapter, Brahman Maya Purusha. That next chapter is a huge chapter, Brahman Purusha Ishwar Maya Prakriti Shakti, forty pages.